Please let me open with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, I thank you for being so good and so gracious. For truly, this is the day you have made, and we're rejoicing and being glad in it. And Lord God, once again, I thank you for this privilege, this pleasure uh, to minister your word, even on this Resurrection Day 2020. And allow me to speak with holy boldness, but yet with compassion. Lord God, I ask you that the anointing that rests on this ministry to lift burdens, destroy yokes, uh, renew minds, and change lives. And I thank you, Jesus, that before it's all said and done, that you'll continue to confirm your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. And I praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Those of you watching, uh, check in, check in, check in so we can know that you are there. Amen. Well, as I said, uh, we all know that this particular time of year, many say Easter, uh, the believers, we call it Resurrection Day. But it's really the most important and really the most celebrated time of year or holiday uh, for Christianity. And I say that because it's the belief in the resurrection of Jesus. This is what Easter is really all about, the resurrected Christ. And I say that because without the resurrected Christ, it was just an innocent man who died on the cross between two thieves. Without the resurrection, uh, Jesus was just a man who spent three and a half years helping and blessing people. He was a man who preached hope to the hopeless. Uh, he was a man who healed the sick, did many, many wonderful things, taught things to people that they did not know. But you see, without the resurrection, really the status of Jesus really uh, is just one of the great prophets. How do I know that? In the scriptures, Jesus asked his disciples a question. He said, whom do men, I the son of man, say that I am? In other words, Jesus was asking the disciples, you know, all that I'm doing, all of the ministry, what are the people saying about me? And then the disciples, they answered, some say John the Baptist. Others said Elijah, others said Jeremiah, and then some said perhaps just one of the prophets. So now this is why I say really uh, it, it, it's it, the importance of the resurrection. I'll even take it a step further. It was not even just the death of Jesus, you know, that, that fully, fully matters. Because we know throughout scriptures there were other people, even other men and women of God, who were killed. Specifically, what brings to mind John the Baptist, who was the cousin and the forerunner of Jesus. He was beheaded. So now you see, without the resurrection, what we know of as today as Christianity would be no more than just another religion. But people of God, because of the resurrection, being a Christian is not a religion. But because of the resurrection, being a Christian means you have a personal relationship with God. In other words, being born again is a spiritual experience like nothing else in the world. You see, Christianity is really not just serving God, but Christianity is the God whom you serve is the same God who lives inside of you. Oh, thank God. Even 1 John 4.15 says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. So what am I saying? Never forget this, that what we have, Christianity, being born again, knowing Jesus as Savior of our life, what we have is not religion. But you see, but because of the resurrection, because of Jesus, who he is, the son of the living God, we've been redeemed 
from the power of darkness brought into his marvelous light. You see, it's because of the resurrection that if any man, woman, boy, or girl be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Hallelujah. So now, I want to get in on my uh, message on what I want to talk about on today. So those of you who are following, let's go to Galatians, the third chapter of Galatians. And I'm going to read a familiar passage beginning at the 13th verse. The third chapter of Galatians, beginning at verse 13, says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, if you look down, uh, down to verse 26, it says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. There is neither black or white, educated, uneducated. That's Dr. Pettis addition to that. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed, and you are heirs according to the promise. So now, on this Easter day, on this Resurrection Sunday, I like to title this message, Remembering Your Redemption. Remembering Your Redemption. And if I would give this a subtitle, I would call this, Don't Forget Who You Are. I'll tell you that again. Don't forget who you are. Now, this passage, it's very familiar to many, but uh, I've learned over the years to never assume that everybody knows the scriptures. So it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, what does this word redeem mean? It means to gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. Redeem also means uh, to buy back, to get or to win back. So now with those definitions, we could easily say redemption has a price. Yeah, yeah. To redeem something is not a free transaction. Yeah. You know, I remember growing up uh, in, in church years and years ago, and people, and they didn't mean any harm with this, but they would say salvation is free. And sometimes people can assume that, well, salvation is free. Well, based on what we're reading here, whenever, when was it free? A price had to be paid. And that payment came in the result of what Jesus did. So now, the question is, why did Jesus have to send Jesus? You know, why did God have to send Jesus? What was this redemption all about? Well, let's go to 1 John 3 and 8. 1 John, the third chapter. Verse 8, it says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hmm. So the devil sinneth from the beginning. We're not talking about his days in heaven when he was Lucifer. We're talking about after he got shot down, yeah, yeah. you know, and then injected uh, 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 evil into the earth. And it says, for this purpose, the Son of God was revealed, though was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, one translation to that verse says it like this. The reason the Son of God was made visible was to undo, to loosen, to dissolve the works the devil has done. 
So now with that said, we could say Jesus came to undo what the devil has done. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Well, what did the devil do? Well, you don't have to turn to it. We know the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, you know, considering what they did. But then you got to kind of go a step back and think about this. In Genesis 1.26, when God was making man, he, it says God gave man dominion over all the earth. In other words, God gave man complete authority. See, one of the things about man before the fall, before uh, 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 they, Adam yielded to the enemy, man operated out of revelation. See, in other words, Adam, he didn't have to go to school. Thank God for schools. Thank God for education. But Adam operated out of revelation and not information. And then when God made him, said that, that God breathed into, into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a, a, a living soul. In one translation, man became another speaking spirit. So in other words, God made Adam as another speaking spirit like himself. Now, why am I saying that? So, so Adam, he had complete authority in the earth. You know, he was to rule and he was to reign. And he was to operate out of revelation, not information. And he was a speaking spirit like God. In other words, his words had power to create. In other words, the primary use of words in the very beginning was not to communicate, but to create. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So now all of that and some got lost because of disobedience. Now, if you go to Romans, the fifth chapter of Romans, looking at verse 12, the fifth chapter of Romans, verse 12 says, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, referring to Adam, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude or likeness of Adam's transgression, who is in the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift, for it through the offense of one, many be dead. But much more, the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that had sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But this free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For by one man's offense, referring to Adam, death reigned by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. And verse 19 says, for by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Because of what Adam did, we were all made as sinners. So by the obedience of one, being Jesus, shall many be made righteous. Hallelujah. Now that's a lot said, but to just simplify, basically, uh, Adam messed us up, but Jesus came to undo it. I ain't even got to get into the, to the Greek and all the different translations. Adam messed us up, but Jesus, he, he got us back together. Hallelujah. So now, looking back at our main scripture, Galatians 3.13. For Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And we understand this word redeem means to buy back, uh, to free, to regain, recover, or pay a price for. Now, when we're talking about the curse, the curse of the law, it consists of three areas. It consists of spiritual death, 
And spiritual death is simply separation from God. Then it also consists of sickness and disease. In other words, Christ has redeemed us from this curse of all physical or mental illnesses that's destructive to the body. And then the third curse is lack and poverty. In other words, Christ has redeemed us from anything that falls short of us fulfilling our purpose. So in essence, the truth of this verse is telling us that Jesus has already done something, because has redeemed is past tense. We know he's done it. Jesus has already done something so that you and I would never have to live this life or even the life to come separated from God. So that's that first part, that, that, that redemption, that, that being spiritual death. We never have to be separated from God. Jesus did something about that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Nor live this life with a diseased body that's painfully deteriorated. Not even anything that affects the mind. Jesus has redeemed us from that. Yeah. Now, somebody say the mind. Did you not know when you read the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, it talks about the blessings, but it also talks about the curses? Yeah. And did you not know all time is in senility is under the curse? Oh, okay. Christ has redeemed us not only from physical sickness, but he's also redeemed us from mental sickness. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So any, he redeemed us from any life, disease, that, 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 that causes deterioration. Neither do we have to live a life under supply. Now, we're in a time right now that, you know, folks are fearful in different things, and you go in many of the stores, there's, they're under supplied in certain things. But Christ has redeemed us. You don't have to be lacking in your supply. You don't have to live under supply. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In other words, Christ has redeemed us where you're supposed to have enough to fulfill your purpose. So now, how did Jesus accomplish this? By being made a curse for us. In other words, Jesus, he took on, he literally felt the pains. He experienced the, 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 the pain of spiritual death. You know, many of us know the scripture when Jesus was on the cross, when he said, my God, my God, thou hast forsaken me. That was spiritual death. That was Jesus being separated from the Father. He felt forsaken like, my God, how can you leave me in my time of need? That spiritual death, separation from God. Jesus experienced that. He also bore the stripes of every sickness and infirmity that we know, and even sicknesses and diseases we don't even know of. He redeemed us. Yes, they may not right now have the vaccine or the cure for coronavirus, but Jesus redeemed us from it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And Jesus, he also took on the shame of poverty. Now, some might say, well, how do you do that? Well, listen. Now, that's not saying Jesus was poor, so I don't want anybody to think that. When he was here on earth, no, no, he wasn't poor. Now, if, if he was able to, 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 to bless and furnish his disciples, 12 disciples, who many of them had families, and he also had a, a treasurer, you don't have a treasure with nickels and dimes. One scripture tells us about Jesus had a house. Whose house do you think it was when, when those men, when they came in and then the one crippled man, they tore a roof in this house to lower the man for, for him to get healed? That was Jesus' house. So Jesus was not poor. Well, we'll go a step back. When he was born with Joseph and Mary, those, those wise men, the world says three wise men. It was several wise men. They had a train of things to bring to the baby Jesus for them to be able to stay away a few years before returning home. So Jesus, so when we're talking about his poverty, no, we compare his poverty from what he left. From what he left to coming down here, that's poverty. Praise God. So now, Jesus was made or he paid the price for the curse, spiritual death, sickness and disease, and lack and poverty. 
2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In the Living Bible, it says it like this. For God took the sinless Christ and poured into him our sins. Then, in exchange, because remember, redemption is exchange. In exchange, he poured God's goodness into us. Man, what a price. What, what an is. I know it don't seem fair, but that's where the grace and mercy comes in. God took the sinless Christ and poured who we are in him. And as a result, the exchange is he poured God's goodness in us. Oh, my God. So Jesus was made a curse. He literally paid the price for the penalty of the curse. He experienced it in all three areas. And you see, because of Jesus, all that was lost, you know, in the Garden of Eden has been restored back. Everything the enemy did has been reversed. In other words, all of our godly rights and privileges has been restored. Well, what does that look like? Well, in the 103rd number of Psalm, beginning at verse 1, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What does that look like? Verse 3, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Now get this. Now, initially, Adam was not designed to die. Because to this day, the spirit is eternal. So Adam was not designed to die. It's just as time went on, the, uh, the lifespan went down. But here, it says, your youth will be renewed like the eagles. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, what's the lifespan of a man? Genesis 6 and 3. A man's years or his days shall be at least 120. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody in the audience, shout 120. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So you see, this is how we remember our redemption. And you see, and when you don't remember that, then you can't help but to forget who you are. See, this is why I titled this Remembering Your Redemption and subtitled it Don't Forget Who You Are. Because if you don't remember it, then you can't help but to forget. You see, as people of God, your whole total identity is rooted in your redemption. Those of us who are born again, those of us in the family of God, our total identity is rooted in our redemption. See, I've learned really that the reason most Christians don't really know and understand who they are is because they don't know their redemption. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they're saved on their way to heaven. But the reason they don't really, really know who they are is because they don't understand their redemption. In other words, most Christians, they know they're saved. Yeah. They know that when this life is over, they're not going to hell. They're yeah. going to heaven. Many of them know that God does forgive. He forgives sins, you know. Then many of them, they believe God can heal you. So what am I saying? Most Christians, they, they have some level of confidence, but it's only in bits and pieces. But not all have really held on or not all have not really embraced all that Christ has redeemed us from. Now, like anything else concerning the things of God, there is an important 
necessary determining factor to all of this. What is that? Let's go to Ephesians. The second chapter of Ephesians, and let's begin at verse 8. The second chapter of Ephesians, beginning at verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Hmm. For by grace, or we could say, because of God, you are saved. Because of God, you are healed. Because of God, you are delivered. But we can also say, because of grace, you are redeemed. See, in other words, if you can't save yourself, you can't heal yourself, you didn't redeem yourself. See, there's nothing anyone could have done to redeem us. That's why redemption is a gift. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, my. Now, like anything in the natural, how do you receive a gift? You have to take it. Yeah. Uh -huh. if, if I was offering you this handkerchief as a gift, if you were here, in order for you to receive it, you would have to take it. If you don't take it, you can't have it. Even though I'm saying this is yours, I'm giving it to you. In order for you to receive it, you got to take it. But if you don't take it, you can't have it. Sometimes we don't have things because we didn't take it. So now that's the same thing here. The determining factor here is in order to receive the redemption, you have to take it by faith. See, this is really, this is, 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 is some really what's kind of happening now, what's been happening in the, the last uh, really a couple months, but definitely the last month or so around the world, especially with a lot of believers. A lot of believers have forgotten who they are. Now, I love you, and I'm not coming against you, you know, but don't you forget who you are. Especially those of you who've known God for so long. Is this not the same God with many of you who delivered you 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago? You got your healing five years ago? And now you're going to forget who you are? See, sometimes you will only forget because you're not remembering your redemption. Now, I'll, 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 I'll just step away from this for, for one second. Sometimes you've got to remember of your past victory. See, some of you right now, maybe some of you are not getting what I'm saying, but remember the same God who brought you out before. Remember that. If the same God who healed you from cancer, remember that. Same God who, 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 who supplied your need. Remember that. Don't you forget who you are. Remember who God is. So we're remembering our redemption. Now, in order to stay in remembrance, you got to stay in faith. You got to stay in faith. See, I've learned years ago that really when you get out of faith, you'll start forgetting just about everything. Amen. You know, see, when you get out of faith, as I was talking about remembering some of those past victories, when you get out of faith, you'll start remembering that. Amen. So you got to stay in faith. So in order to stay in remembrance, I got to stay in faith. Amen. You see, the opposite of faith is fear. Fear will automatically give you spiritual amnesia. Yeah. Yeah. See, the moment you get in fear, fear will make you Forget who you are. Forget, fear will make you forget whose you are. Fear will just confuse you. You'll you, you just, you just, like you get spiritual amnesia. 
So don't get in fear. It'll make you forget. So as people of God, we have no fear. Now, I know some of you got to say this by faith, but repeat it after me. No fear. Yeah, I know. I know it's kind of hard to say right now where yet, but you just say it by faith. No fear. Now, make it even personal. I have no fear. Praise God. Well, that was just a little quick check on that. So now, it takes faith to not only receive your redemption, but it takes faith to remember your redemption. Now, as I said earlier in Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. In other words, Christ, he made the exchange to regain, to recover, to get back what was ours. How? By snatching it from the devil. Now, I'm going to read a passage of scripture found in Colossians, the second chapter, starting at the ninth verse. And instead of reading out of the King James, which I normally do, I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation because it gives more clarity. The second chapter of Colossians, beginning at verse 9, it says, For he is the complete fullness of deity living in human form, and our own completeness is now found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. He is the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. Now that should get something right now. God is the head of it don't, the, the devil's kingdom, every, everything. God is the head of that. Through our union with him, we have experienced circumcision of heart. All of the guilt and power of sin has been cut away and is now extinct because of what Christ, the anointed one, has accomplished for us. Let me say that again. All of the guilt. And some of you right now might be feeling guilty because you're not as strong as you thought. You might be feeling guilty because, you know, I, I, I've allowed this thing to get fear in me. No, no, no. You, 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 you stop that right now. He says, see, all of the guilt and power of sin has been cut away and is now extinct because of what Christ has accomplished for us. We've been buried with him into his death. Our baptism into death also means we were raised with him when we believed in God's resurrection power. The power that raised him from death is rim. This realm of death describes our former state. For we were held in sin's grasp. Yeah, yes, we were. But now we've been resurrected out of that realm of death. Never to return. For we are forever alive and forgiven of our sins. See, that's good news to know right there. When you're in Christ, it ain't no going back. Never to return. He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record. In other words, were we guilty? Yep. But he canceled it out. And the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. What's the old arrest warrant? The wages of sin or the penalty of sin is death. Yes, because of what Adam did and who we are, yes, we should have been separated from God. But he canceled out the legal violation from our record. That old arrest warrant. I don't know if any of you ever had a warrant for your arrest. But that old arrest warrant that stood to indict us or to convict us, he erased it all. See, I'm reading redemption here. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul, he deleted it. He deleted it all, and they can, and it cannot be retrieved. In other words, it can't be brought back up. 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 It, it cannot be retrieved. It cannot be retrieved. He deleted it permanently cannot be retrieved. There's nothing that can be done to bring it back up. Everything we once were in Adam 
has been placed unto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. I like that. It was made public that the devil and everybody know that, that that bill has been paid for permanently there as a public display. Oh, my. Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. Folks, this is part of your redemption. Part of your redemption is power. This is what makes us more than conquerors. We didn't have to do this, but we get it because we're in Christ. Jesus was the conqueror, but we're more than conquerors. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Folks, that's your redemption. See, in other words, you're not a prisoner to the enemy. Before Christ, we were. But you're no longer a prisoner to the enemy. You're no longer bound by him. You know, you once again, you got authority over him. See, the devil can't do whatever he wants to do to you whenever he wants to. You've got authority over him. Now, take it a step further. Jesus said this in Revelation 1.18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What does that mean? 1 Corinthians 15 and 55 and 57 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus said, listen, I've got, I, 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 what I did, I have the keys of hell and the death. And guess what? He's given that authority to the church. So what does that mean? Even death is dead. Even death is dead. Part of our redemption, you don't have to fear death because it's dead. Now, somebody might say, what you mean? People dying all the time. Let me tell you something about the sinker. Well, what happens when you go? I ain't dying. I just transition. Oh, thank you. That's another message for another time. But even death is dead. See, Jesus, see, if he had not resurrected, then he would not have conquered death. Because of the resurrection, he conquered death. He said, I was dead, but I'm alive forever. Oh, thank you, Jesus. See, this is even why Psalms 107.2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I mean, who is the redeemed? Those of us who are born again. Those of us in the family of God. We have a command to say something. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed or delivered from the hand of the enemy. You're the redeemed. You got to say something. So what do the redeemed say? We say, listen, with long life will I be satisfied. See, some of you need to be saying that now. No virus, no sickness, whatever, because viruses come and go. Something else can come up next year. It ain't got nothing to do with it. But what do the redeemed say? The redeemed say, long life will I be satisfied. The redeemed say, my life has been redeemed from destruction. Sicknesses and diseases is destruction. But because I'm redeemed, my life has been redeemed from that destruction. What does the redeemed say? My youth has been renewed like the eagle. That's part of your redemption. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. What else does the redeemed say? No weapon 
Many of you know that scripture, Isaiah 54. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. What does the redeemed say? A thousand shall fall at thy side. Ten thousand at thy right side. But it shall not come nigh thee. So I don't care what's going on. A thousand may be over here on the west side. There be 10,000 on the east side. But it's not coming near me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What does the redeemed say? There shall no evil befall me. Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Come near my dwelling. You are believing if you got a family. Listen. You, you ain't even come near my dwelling. You ain't come, you ain't, where I stay, you ain't coming near here. You ain't coming around here. You ain't getting my husband. You ain't getting my wife. You ain't getting my kids. Whoever with me, you ain't coming near my dwelling. And pastors, you ain't coming near our ministries. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What did the redeemed say? For God will give his angels charge over me to keep me and to protect me in all my ways. See, this is remembering your redemption. And see, when you remember that, you ain't forgetting who you are. And you're not going to allow anything to scare you off. You're not going to allow anything to cause you to back up or to retreat or to give up or to give in. See, that's redemption talk. See, redeemers we speak a certain way. Redeemers speak with victories. We don't speak like victims. Redeemers speak with victory. Oh, my God. See, that's when you know who you are. You see, people? Remembering your redemption. It's not just about today being Easter Sunday. No, 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 no. But it's every day. Every day. You remember. You're a new creature in Christ. You remember you got faith. You remember you don't have any fear. You remember that God has given you power. He's given you love. He's given you a sound mind. See, you remember that you got the spirit of God living inside of you. That's what you remember, my brother, my sister. Romans 8 and 11 says, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. Mm -mm -mm. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or bring to life your mortal body. If you born again, that same spirit, that resurrected power, that same power that raised Jesus is the same power that lives in you. So what am I saying? Anything that seems like it's been dead, exercise that power in you. Wake it up and cause it to come alive. Remember your redemption. Don't you dare forget who you are. And I close once again. When you remember this, you won't forget who you are. Folks, you are the redeemed of the Lord. You are the redeemed of the Lord. I'm not coming against you. You know, like I say, I know that, that many of you could, you could not be in your churches and you're watching online. Praise God, this is going to be over soon. You keep saying, you keep saying, as quick as this came in, as, as, as Brother Copeland has told many of us, it's going out just as fast. And you believe that. So don't you get comfortable. Yeah, you, you're sitting viewing right now, but don't you get comfortable. This is not a way of life for us. This is just temporary because soon and soon we're going to all be back in our churches giving God praise and giving God glory. Remember your redemption. You remember it and don't you dare forget who you are. I mean, starting right now this week, I know things might try to come against you. He's like, I'm remembering my redemption. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed from that sickness. I've been redeemed from that, that lack. I've been redeemed from that depression. I've been redeemed from that fear. I've been redeemed from that. I'm remembering who I am. God bless every heart. Listen, maybe someone's viewing this and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. See, because I never take it for granted that everyone who watches are believers. No. 
no, no, no. But if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, and you're like, Pastor, you know what? I want to be saved. I've been living in fear. Maybe some of you have been running from God. This is your opportunity right now. Amen. You can do it right now. Amen. You know, thank God for being in the church building. But in order to get saved, you don't have to be in the church building. Amen. You can do it right now. Amen. If that's you, I want to lead you in prayer right now. And you just repeat these words after me. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you right now as a sinner needing to be saved. I need you to come into my life, take control of my life, and do something with my life. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for me, and I believe that God raised him from the dead, and he is alive right now. Dear God, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins right now. And from this day forward, I will serve you. I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. From this day forward, my life is changed. I am saved on my way to heaven. That's all it takes. That's all it takes, brother. That's all it takes, sister. Now, the next thing you need to do, wherever you're at, uh, if you're in the, in the Chicagoland area, fill out the information. Uh, call us here, our Better Life Prayer Ministers. They are, they are around on the phone. Yeah, even on a Sunday. Yeah, you know, you know, the kingdom of God doesn't stop. We go, we're 24-7. So uh, call us. Now, those of you, if you're around the country, around the world, get, get with the church. If you're not sure about that, call us, and wherever you're at, we can direct you to a church in your area. But see, the most important you think, thing you did now was making that decision to become one of the redeemed. Praise God. Also to the next thing, those who are viewing, uh, especially our Better Life members, uh, if you would like to give, uh, you know, you can fill out the information that's on the screen and, and give your tithes, your offerings, or whatever it is that you want to give. And those, if you're not a member, if you just like to, to, to help continue supporting this ministry, you are free to do that also, too. Amen. Praise God. Folks, this has been Resurrection Sunday. Amen. There's no way in the world the people of God should not have experienced a church spiritual experience yes. on Easter Sunday. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Amen. God bless every heart. Uh, I'll see you all this coming Wednesday for our normal uh, Better Life Lessons at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. This is Apostle Dr. Stephen L. Pettis. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Remember, remember your redemption, and don't forget who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.